The Say Jack Goodbye continues. Yeah. And, uh, you know, listen, we're halfway there. It's 105.9 The Mountain Asheville's Classic Rock. And I'm so, I'm so torn on this. Why? Because it's sort of like, yes, I know you're old and you're ornery. Yes, I know that you have a 16 martini lunch. <laughs> yes, I know the Pat Sajak show was a complete failure, but you're all I know. And comfort is an important thing in my life. And when I see Pat, I feel comforted on the wheel. I don't I don't like not feeling comfy watching the wheel i uh, you look it's like anything and you remember when we first got here people were like um you know change i'm not used to that but as you you settle in you know it's okay i now i don't know if settling in with seacrest is going to be uh, something right. we, because if to people now they might have went with him because so many people know him and they've seen him so it might be right. an, it might be an easy transition and what are you really doing at the end of the day you're calling out how many letters are on a board, man. Well, it's and not that a is lot. turning them, right? Right. I mean, right. you know what I would have done, and maybe this is just me, and then we'll, we'll get to opening audio. I would have, I would have thanked, I would have thought outside of the box. Like, I would have done like a Woody Harrelson. Yeah. Like, Woody Harrelson would have been a perfect Wheel of Fortune host. Yeah. Yeah. Woody. Uh, he's a he's a real stiff though. Woody, Honest, Woody's a stiff. I love Woody. Yeah. Woody's like in everything. And and by the way, do you know that Vanna is is uh, happy about this because uh, the change of the food that is going to be backstage and catering is going to go away from the sloppasaurus stuff to more <laughs> so health, no sloppy jokes. to more to more health food conscious type things. So uh, really, so, so she's so, looking forward. So to she's it. unlike our local Asheville mayor, Mayor Manheimer, who was not you know was happy to go to the White House, but didn't like the Democratic quinoa, but liked the Republican Chick Fil A choices. Yeah, when Trump was in, you you got Chick Fil A, which it's you know it's hard to turn down. Uh, I but, agree you know, with that. But you go in I under agree. under Michelle Obama there. And she, uh, you know, she kind of enjoyed the the health food stuff, and you know, so you had the quinoa. Well, you know what? Speaking of quinoa and something just as blah as it, let's uh, let's get to uh, the say Jack goodbye and the inevitable Ryan Seacrest. It's time for opening audio here on the Rizzo and Jeff Show. A fun, funny way to start your day on one hundred five nine The Mountain. Say Jack has a way with. I don't know if it's just me, but creating awkward memories. Do you, do you know what I mean? Like you I, watch, well, I mean, there's just awkward things that he gets out of people. Maybe that's his talent. Well, I think he lives for it. I think he, he knows it. And I think he understands that he's supposed to be the buttoned up, you know, game show host. And he's far from that. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. He's actually dirty. Yeah. I oh, mean, yeah. He's, he's nasty. He, <laughs> he he's is. a nasty little, little <laughs> oinker. <laughs> So here's Say Jack uh, pulling the nasty out uh, of a guest. Hello, Blair. Hello. Cardiff, California. Own the trucking business, it says here. Small trucking business yeah. in San Diego. Yeah. Good for you. And talk about your family. I've been trapped in a loveless marriage for the last 12 years <laughs> to an old battle axe named Kim. She cursed my life with three stepchildren named Star, RJ, and Ryan. And I have one rotten grandson. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Okay, Pat. Well, you know, I uh, mean, what what's happening on this show? Well, you what know, is this? well, I think the problem with that Pat needs to understand is that uh, is that you think this guy's joking. And after no. and after he doesn't win on the wheel, <laughs> he's okay, going on. all his all those kids are getting run over <laughs> with one of his trucks. OK, <laughs> so laugh it up, Pat. <laughs> Imagine that being your final week. It's time for <laughs> opening audio here on the Rizzo and Jeff Show. A fun, funny way to start your day on 105.9 The Mountain. Yeah, like that Jenny Jones guy, but it's the Wheel of Fortune killer. Yeah, when she surprised him with the other guy. Yeah, yeah. 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 If, yeah. 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 Uh, all right, moving on. The Church Karen. Listen, if somebody comes up to you and says, don't park here or my son's going to do you, yeah. you might want to listen up. Yeah, and you think it's funny? No, till you get done. Till you get done. <laughs> then when then when you get done, yeah, then it's a whole different world. Right. So this is making its way viral all over the internet, uh, and uh, it's special. Here's a church, Karen. You can't park here. You can't loiter here. You can't. Park Why here. can't I park here? This is a holy place, and you can't park here. If you don't move your car, I'm going to get get my son Ben, and he'll come and do you. Sorry. 
my son. My son Ben will come and he will do you. So please, <laughs> me. What are you laughing at? Why are you laughing at me? Because your son Ben's going to come and do me. You can't park here. You haven't got a parking permit. Okay, so because I've not got a parking permit, Ben's going to come outside and do me. My son Ben, he's going to come outside and he's going to do you. <laughs> don't laugh at me. I don't find this funny at all. I don't think so. and, uh, on, on, you're talking about this place, yeah? Being a holy place, yeah? Yep. I'm just waiting for Ben to come outside and do me. Because you'll see you've got no parking permit. <laughs> you park where you can't park. Yeah, exactly. Park legally. Yeah, yeah. And he'll come out and he'll do you. <laughs> I'm going to go and get him now. And what? Is it going to do me? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Ben was, Ben, Ben came out and did him. Yeah. Ben well, done did them. Well, listen, uh, I don't, I, I didn't know Ben was weaponized to do people. <laughs> okay. <laughs> she mom, raised him to do uh, people? Uh, it seems that to be the case, that she knows that her son, when called upon, will do you and do anybody that she needs done. Well, Ben, okay. we definitely know he was raised in the church. Yeah. You uh, know. No, we know that. <laughs> <laughs> no sleep till. The Rizzo and Jeff Show. One is older and wiser. The other, well, the other's life fell to pieces and his fiance is out of glue. Yeah, you get what you get. Here's to hoping we made the right decision. Weekdays, 6 to 10 a.m. on 105.9 The Mountain. Octogenarians are at it again. It's 105.9 The Mountain. Nashville's classic rock. You got Rizzo and Jeff. Jeff. Octogenarians are people in the any plus community, oftentimes our parents, grandparents, and they are getting world leaders, world leaders. Yeah. Uh, they're getting frisky. Uh, they're getting they're just getting ornery and they're just doing whatever the heck they want. Listen, I've never seen an, an uh, you know, an era uh, or just a time, a decade when 80 plus has gone bonkers on us and yeah, they're going it, behind that's true and it really seems to be happening and every week that we walk in here and try to deliver a a top quality grade a radio program for you it seems to always involve a story that involves in some way somehow the hooligans of the 80 plus community yeah, and uh, it's because of their hooliganizing. Is that a word? Uh, hooliganery well, shenanigans? It is now. Okay. All right. Uh, that uh, we oftentimes have many uh, stories, and we can only pick a few, but there's two that stuck out to me. One, an octogenarian who said, you know what's a good thing with my retirement money, with my little bit of time left in life? I'm going to fly a plane. Hmm. Some call. It's a good call, but, yeah, you know, here's the thing. What Roy could go wrong? Ha- uh, well, here's the thing. You, a lot of people might not know this. Roy Halliday actually uh, lived in North Carolina. Um, he was a former uh, Major League Baseball pitcher for the Blue Jays and the Phillies, was flying a plane, crashed into a tree, and he died. Well, first off, uh, you know, in context... Uh, you know, after a blood test, he was enjoying his time in the sky. Well, he liked okay. He was in the sky yeah. in two, in more than uh, more one, you know, more than more one ways way. than yeah. one. That's true. But this octogenarian uh, decided to, uh, you know, get their own plane with their retirement money and go for a little uh, scoot. Okay. And this is what happened. The four-year-old was left hanging inside the cockpit about 20 feet from the ground yesterday. He wasn't injured and was able to call 911 for help. Emergency responders used a pulley and harness system to get him down. He told investigators he had difficulty getting lift and hit a downdraft, which caused him to crash. So basically, a man in a plane is flying and he crashed into some trees, Jeff. Okay, well, here's the problem. Right? It's cognitive skills. So when you're in your in your 80s, I think he was like 86 or something. So when you're up there, it, you know, your reaction time... I guess, slows for you a little bit. I would assume, you know, at 86. And, you know, so to be able to, uh, you know, handle an airplane when you hit a downdraft, whatever he was in, it just sounds like something bizarre. It was one of those, like... He, you sit in it and... You the, sit, it's, it's like a glider, a but glider. it is a plane. Okay, it, uh, first they're off... They're like $125,000. First off, a glider is even worse. What are you doing in a glider? In a plane, you got a better shot. What are you doing in a glider? Come uh, on. That's somebody... You know what? He can't afford a G6, so okay. he just wanted to glide. So he, okay. you literally jump off cliffs in this glider, and you glide around. Listen, you want to glide? Uh, hit a water slide. Take a blue pill and hit a water slide, all right? 
<laughs> You'll feel like you're gliding. You yeah. don't have to be in the air. No, you're right. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and this last octogenarian, there is a no-structure grandma. This kid, uh, he asked his dad who was babysitting, and when he said grandma, he about lost his dang mind. Mom, he's babysitting me tonight. Grandma. I hate when she babysits me. You, why don't you like me babysitting you? Because I have no structure. You let me do whatever I want. <laughs> Because I stay up all night, and when I wake up, I'm tired, and my stomach hurts, because you let me eat all the junk food, then I have nightmares, because you let me watch whatever I want. I told you, Mom, and you used to do that with me, too. So these these people that are well, not, I mean this is this is bizarre. So he's upset that his grandma lets him do whatever he wants. First off, I, he well, needs I, structure. The kid I, says he wants some structure. Jeff, you, see that's the difference in you know grandmas of these days. Because my grandmom, on the other hand, did not let me do whatever I wanted. Oh, I'm with you there. And if I was out of line, uh-huh. my grandmom liked to do the old school, and this was her thing, pull the hair. My grandma oh. loved to pull hair. Was she a hair puller? Oh, it was vicious. My my grandmother, Barbara, uh, she used to do the backhand, but with the wedding ring on. Listen, let oh. me tell you something, my friend. Oh. My grandma, Kit. When if <laughs> Kit, Nana Kit. And, and let me tell you, I'm going to promise you this, uh, you know, Kit, as she might have been pulling your hair and kicking your butt. But let me tell you something. She didn't drop that Winston 100 <laughs> period. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> the Rizzo and Jeff show. It's like watching a car drive down the wrong side of the road. You can't look away. The Rizzo and Jeff show. We'll be right back. All right. Here's the situation. I have a question. OK, it's one of five nine. The Mountain Nashville's classic rock. And again, eight to eight, two, four, oh, one, oh, five, nine. The Mountain Talk at Texas. I can get Texas. You can call us whatever. Do goats talk? OK. People seem to be under the misguided conception that goats talk. Yeah. They yeah. don't talk. I, They're is, goats. You know, this, this is probably a, a Johnny question of, of of all things. Yeah, he's about getting ready to get on. I bet you had Johnny's on I-40 right about now. Um, But, uh, yeah, there's this belief, and people that have goats on a farm or a pet goat yeah. really believe that they're goats, and that something's going viral here, that their goats actually conceptualize and understand you know vocabulary right they spit green stuff and, and right. poop pellets and eat cans and, and eat they cans. and they and you, you think that they can understand and say like words and there's people that really do believe this and i i i don't hear it um i'm maybe i'm not around goats enough you might uh, unfortunately, not be. Uh, you might not be. That might be your issue. I, I need to be more of a goat guy, maybe. Well, okay, so I have the audio where people are like, oh, my God, there's goats talking, there's goats talking, and then I have other goat audio to share with you, and you can tell me if you could decipher what they're saying. So, we... No, uh, oh, oh, well, well, well let's, 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 What, what? What, what? What? What, what? What, what? What, what? So it sounds a little bit like what what, but yeah. again, I don't know. Yeah. One hundred five nine, the mountain. Hello. Yep, this is Johnny. Were you on forty? I'm almost on forty. Almost there, about half a mile away to get on. I felt it. I felt yeah, it. We so, know. so the goats talk. Yes, sir. There's more than goats that talk. What, okay. Okay. okay, what do the goats say? You've heard goats talk. What have you heard them say? So. So I can step out on my front porch right now. Mm. I do it every day, every morning. And there's goats right out there, probably 30 yards from my front porch in the fence. And I can start calling, and they'll call back. Or I'll go over yonder to the fence and got some alpaca. (laughs) Tina, she's ugly, but she'll talk to you. All right. Okay. <laughs> She's ugly, uh, but what? she'll Johnny. talk to you. Where'd you what? Right. Johnny, your... when you call out in the morning, say you're there, you're having your Folgers in your cup, okay, and you're calling out. Yeah. What are you calling out? Uh, let me hear you do a call out to the goat. What would you say? So so I'm like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then they'll come right up to the fence, and here they come just to get it. And they're like, yeah, yeah, man. <laughs> So what? Know, you, do you think they understand you for real? Well, here's the deal. When I start walking down there, here they come. And they're looking at me like, hey, hey, Johnny, what's going on? 
<laughs> so I start talking to them. I get in the fence. I'll just sit down there in the pasture, talk to them for a while, and then uh, they'll jump up on a few rock and stuff and kind of hang out and nudge me, come up and try to nudge me on the leg to say, hey, are they it's all kinds of good stuff? Do, are they yeah. your are they your pals? Is this a, a business for you? No, Do you sell no, goats? No, they're, well, no, no, they're 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 not my pals because you know they usually taste pretty good. You know, oh wow! Mm. Okay. Are they are they okay? Are they edible? I didn't know a goat goats? was edible. Oh my god! You go to like uh, Jamaica and that's they love goat there. Oh yeah, yeah. So so a, so a deer is a cousin. And the, you know it's venison on a deer, but a goat's a cousin, so they're pretty much like you know kissing cousins or whatever. Okay, mm. okay, okay. So, yeah. So, so 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 you talk to your goats, and then when when the yeah. time arises, you uh you know cook them for dinner. Yeah, it's time for you know for a, a good meal. So everything's good, but they got to be a certain you know size and you know. The meat's got to be tender, and everything's got to be good. So you know, everything's good. That's yeah. why. That's why you don't get too attached to these goats because yeah. if time yeah. if times get tough and you need supper, you're, you're looking for one of them. Right? Don't you remember one time I told you you got to be able to sustain yourself one of these days, and that's one way to do it. Okay? Goats. You got to be able to. Yep, goats, chickens, alpaca, cows. You name it. Where would one there. purchase an alpaca? Well, you've got to you got to find an alpaca like farm a person. Okay, okay. I mean they don't just fall out of the tree. <laughs> right, <laughs> right, right, I was right, wondering right, that. Right, right. There's no alpacas in the oaks. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, all right. well, Johnny, drive safe, okay, and uh, you know uh, you have a good morning, and thank you for your knowledge. Yeah, man. So you got to play something for me. What are you, you ready to get on? I'm on forty now. Getting ready to hit the road, man. Hit the road. Get on it. Got to get on the ACDC choo choo. Yeah, I gotta see if the somebody's down here that likes to sit somewhere and make sure that that's not happening to where I can, you know, get on to work here. Hey, so, hey listen, yeah, it looks like I'm, I'm clear. Uh, I'm clear. Good for you. All right, right, clear for takeoff. We'll we'll get some ACDC. Thanks for your call, buddy. You have a good morning. Well, okay, so he he talks to him I, again. Again, I don't hear <laughs> this. <laughs> I mean, if you think about uh, it, yeah, uh, I know. new home, new place. Uh, what? Where's your mom? <laughs> I, I don't know. Call me crazy. I, I just... I don't hear it. I don't hear it. Are you sure you uh, don't hear I, it? I hear Johnny enjoying talking to his goats. I just, I just don't hear it. I'm, I'm sorry. No, good. Well, that's because you're a normal human being. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. The Rizzo and Jeff Show. One loves Frazier, and the other's still into wrestling. Who's who? Eh. Find out more interesting tidbits about them every morning. From fire hydrants to dog catcher election race results, the Jeff News Network all over things for you, and that's where we bring you this morning. Yeah, well, nobody knows what that means, okay? So uh, stop trying to confuse people, and let's just talk what? about the actual things that'll be in the JNN. It's coming up, we're going to talk about winning a million dollars. It's possible. Uh, it happened to a man here at Asheville. Uh, if you steal a car and you return it, is that okay? Uh, police on the uh, on the hunt for somebody in Buncombe County that did that. And uh, vicious spiders. The next thing that is uh, very quickly arriving on the East Coast. We're going to talk about that coming up. All right. Well, the JNN brought to you by our good friends at Train Heating and Cooling Systems that are tested, retested, engineered, and re-engineered to keep up with you because we run together visit traininfo.com uh, or uh, to find your local independent train dealer that's traininfo.com uh, because it's hard to stop a train time for the world famous never imitated never duplicated and barely making it the jnn jeff news network is on 105.9 the mountain now we gotta find our good buddy peter eckel uh peter he's uh, a nashville resident who won a million-dollar prize uh, by beating... It's one in 12.6 million odds 
and he guessed all five white balls to win uh, the Mega Millions. So, uh, did he guess them, or was it a computer? I, I I think he guessed them. I think that's what it said. Uh, the, well, the odds to guess it, I'm assuming, are you know one in twelve point six million. Right. But, uh, right. But you know, he, look, he he scored himself a nice little prize. I think he took home like seven and some seven and seven some fifteen. Chance. That's not bad. That's not bad at all for a stop on Tunnel Road. I know it was a little stop on uh, Tunnel Road, so he. Uh, I think it was that. Up. You know what I think it was? I think it was because it, it it was that. Uh, and uh, and right and right or whatever yeah, yeah, and right. Yeah. I think that's that. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, right by that uh, cowboy. I I can't. I I always forget the name of it. There's that huge tall cowboy on Tunnel Road. It's like I call it the Cowboy Hotel. Right. Well, isn't that wasn't that like closed for a minute or is it closed? Or uh, I, don't I, know. I I'm not 100 percent sure. Why are you going to do like a sexy date night there or something? Well, I was, and then you know, I I decided against it. But you know, I still might take the lady to the cowboy hotel. It's just, it's just, I can't stop looking at it. It's this big cowboy. Yeah, you know, does it, tra- I mean? it traumatize you? Is that a rough ride for you down the tunnel? It's a rough ride <laughs> for me down the tunnel. When all I needed to do was stop at Enright's, get myself a, a two dollar ticket, and there, you know, I got seven hundred fifty one thousand fazuls. That's not bad, man. That's I'm telling you. But you're afraid of a big giant cowboy, huh? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. that's doesn't. It's the neon Man, hat. You, you have had a rough go since you got here, pal. <laughs> <laughs> the most trusted source for useless information. Who is your source? I need to know your source. The JNN. Jeff News Network is on 105.9 The Mountain now. All right, so uh, there is uh, detectives in uh, Buncombe County are trying to identify a suspect in uh, what they call a motor vehicle larceny. So... Uh, the the unidentified person stole a vehicle from Ricky Rogers Auto Sales, uh, which I think we just talked about this morning. I was was just going to say. Did we just talk about that this morning? Is that not where you just sent me a car link? I think so. Hold on. Let me look at the email while you tell the story. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. So. The unidentified person. Well, that's a sign. That's, that's weird. That's it. Stole the vehicle and then used it in an in a attempted breaking and entering. But here's the thing: he returns it, so he brings the he brings the vehicle back. So I, you know, I was reading some of the comments that were underneath this story, and one of them was from an attorney, and he said, technically, it's actually not a larceny. You must intend to permanently deprive the owner of the property, which he he uh, he clearly did not, or else he would not have returned it. So it, it's an unauthorized use of a motor vehicle. So it's it's a different thing. And I the one guy says we tried to I tried to try this in court, and then it went to a grand jury and got uh, overturned because it wasn't a larceny because uh, he returned it. So so. <laughs> it is. It is, isn't it? I it, know. It is. I sent you a thing this morning about a car, and this is where it happened. At isn't that funny? You and you and oh Ricky Rod. Me and Ricky Rod. Uh, yeah. By the way, uh, fair deal here. Uh, I, I think so. so One hundred eighty-two dollars a month. Uh, you know. Uh, you know. That's really that's, all right. That's pretty. That's pretty good. All right. You know, yeah. so anyway. You better uh, hurry up and go get the car. Yeah, it's going to get stolen. <laughs> it's time for the... Wait, no. It's not really. I mean, who would... Can you put the news back on? The, the JNN. This is the news. The Jeff News Network. A wealth of useful and mostly useless information. All right. So, uh, you know, the, we, we down here seem to like... <laughs> Eating bugs and people like cooking bugs. They and love the bugs. Collecting bugs and drinking bugs in tequila. That's what you do. Well, how about you do this? How about when the Joro spider arrives, you make yourself a little Joros burger, okay? Because the giant venomous Ew. spider with four inch long legs is making their invasion into uh, the United States. Uh, they are a venomous spider and. Uh, this was a study that was done by David Coyle. He's a scientist uh, and professor, uh, Department of Forestry at Clemson, okay? okay? At Clemson in South Carolina. And he says that these invasive species are here to stay. They are spreading like wildfire, and they are going to be uh, on the East Coast. They, The Joros uh, spiders utilize a technique called ballooning, where they release silk threads into the air, allowing them to be carried by the wind, so uh, just know that these uh, possibly could be on the way here on the East Coast. So uh, and especially, I'm sure, here in the mountains, they would just love it. Yeah. Love it. I don't understand the panache for consuming insects. 
No. I don't like venomous spiders. I don't like it. I, I just, I don't. <laughs> I just, you know, are we just at this point in our lives, you know, like this is where it's reached, like the minute that in your life you have decided that you're going to be the person that is the bug eater, nobody wants to be around a bug eater. Y- you they know just what? don't. That's like the, what would you rather be, the nose picker or the bug oh, eater? Oh, listen, I if you placed me in a room with a nose picker I'm with you. and a bug eater, yep. I'll help somebody pick their nose no, before I you. eat a cricket. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. yeah, yeah. More Rizzo and Jeff coming up after a quick break on Asheville's Classic Rock Station, 105.9 The Mountain. I believe he called her an oinker, a little piggy, something like that. It's 105.9 The Mountain, Nashville's Classic Rock. You got Rizzo and Jeff here. So years and years ago, Alec Baldwin left a message for his daughter where she was misbehaving. I think she was 12 or 13 at the time. Her name was Ireland, and he called her a little oinker, or a little I piggy. I or remember something. that. Right. Yes, I do remember that. So this was before, like, super duper cancel culture. So it was the beginning of it. was like 2012, maybe, something okay. like that. We're and on the cusp. We're on the cusp. And, uh, you know, he was getting New York City canceled. And, and I was do, doing a show in New York City at the time. And so I decided to go out to Alec Baldwin's house. Alec Baldwin oftentimes would come outside, ride a bike, you know, walk to the bakery. I thought I'd, you know, get to talk to Alec. Well, Alec didn't uh, come down. I guess, he, there, you know, there were news reporters waiting for him, you know, all that stuff. So I... Slipped uh, the front door, man. I slipped him a $10 bill. That's all it took to get to Baldwin? Well, I, well, I, also, I also said, listen. Okay. I'm a radio guy. I'm young. I'm, you know, I'm just starting out my career. I'm, 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 I really need this. Uh-huh. So, so he, he, I gave him the 10 and he stepped outside to quote unquote, clean up the cigarettes on the ground. And I walked through the door. So I find my way to his apartment, which is on, on the fourth floor. And I knock on the door and I have a uh, box, right? And it was when everyone was saying, Alec Baldwin, get out of New York, right? And I made him a care package in order to stay. So I knock on his door. He opens the door. It's a guy with a weird Kim Jong-un haircut smiling. Uh, and I'm I'm live on the radio. I say, hey, I'm we're live on the radio. Uh, and I wanted to bring you a care package. You'd say, I don't care if you called your daughter a little piggy. Here's a care package. It was a croissant. It was uh, an iced coffee. Uh, I wrote him a handwritten note. I drew him a picture of a piggy. And there was like a little Peppa Pig thing in there, mm-hmm. too. Mm-hmm. And uh, he said some coarse language and then slammed the door in my face and called me Tubby. Okay. Wow. He he really and was he was really living on the big big. Th- he called her a rude, thoughtless little pig. That's was what, what it he was. Her. A rude, thoughtless little pig. So he was really at the time his go to was uh you know the fat you know shame. He it was yeah. And he called me yeah it was, he called me Tubby. He said get out of here Tubby. Okay. And now, right. and now, I'm not going to help make your career. That's well, what he said. Well now we turn around and he's a murderer. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He. Uh. He's. Uh. He's. He's. Uh. Killing TV. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he's, yeah. he's killing. Yeah. Killing TV. Yeah, he's doing a lot of things. He's uh, doing a lot of things. Uh, yeah. uh, Alec is uh, starring in a new show with, and then this is also right when he met Hilarious. So he was. Uh, he's shooting people on the sets of movies. <laughs> Okay, Jesus. it was that, it was an accident. No, okay, that, that's what they said. So you can't hold it against him. It All was right. like the Brandon Lee thing. Right. You know, he got shot. That was uh, during right. the crow. Okay, I know. I remember right. it. it was so, accident. This was accidental. Oh, okay. You know, but All he. Right. You know, so he's right. on trial, and may he might go to the mm-hmm. clink. He might not. But until such time, he's filming reality TV He'd shows. Go hang out with. Todd Chrisley in there. <laughs> <laughs> They'd have a good time. Yeah, I know. Huh. Uh, so Alec, uh, after humiliating me, I never thought that I'd talk about him again. And then I see that uh, he's getting his own reality television show. And they gave us a little sneak peek. Oh, a snippet. A snippet. <laughs> yeah, okay. You know how much we love a good sneak peek? Yeah. Uh, into the Baldwins. And uh, you're going to hear the zany, uh-huh. the crazy... 
the Alec, the Hilaria, and how they deal with their everyday life issues. Now, that, of course, includes many nannies in a $14 million midtown Manhattan apartment. Yeah, it's got to be a rough go. It's rough. Right. It's rough. Here's the Baldwins. Are you in, yay or nay? Hi, I'm Hilaria Baldwin. And I'm Alec Baldwin. And we have an announcement to make. We're inviting you into our home to experience the ups and downs, the good, the bad, the wild, and the crazy. <laughs> Home is the place we love to be most. Did you say we are the ball. We are the ball. No, we are the ball. We all gotta say it. One, two, three. We are the ball. And we're coming to GLC. Didn't this used to be the Learning Channel? Yeah, here's the problem with this, and I'm looking at a picture. I didn't realize he's got one, two, three, like four, seven, five, right? six kids, and yeah. they're all like ten and under. Yeah. See, I need some teenage drama as well. I just can't you have a little, little teenage fl- drama. We'll see if I you need- get on them now. Then by the time you know if it, yeah. if it succeeds, then they grow into the drama, right? Yeah. You know, I mean, what's the oldest ten? Yeah, something of that nature. Yeah. You know, the problem with these is, you know, when you're on trial for something and you throw yourself a reality show. Right. It's like a, you know, it just it seems to not have a, a good ending, like your trial. Do you know what I mean? Well, you're, and maybe this was, a, he was like, look, I'm on trial, right? Uh, what if my kids never see me again? So what wow. if what I do is I do this reality show so that they can watch, you know, us growing up together? Now, granted, uh, it's very easy to get into his apartment. All you got to do is hook his doorman up and beg him. <laughs> Obviously. All right. He hasn't moved from that apartment. I know exactly where it is. I can picture it right in my head. And he's got this wooden door, right? Okay. And, and on this wooden door, it literally says the Baldwins, right? And, so, and it's like, so it's like announcing who he is. And there's a lot of high profile people that live in this building, but he's the only one who says the Baldwins. Okay. Well, it's not very safe to know that all it takes is an Alexander Hamilton <laughs> to walk into his front door. That's pretty scary. Well, and here's the thing. This was before Lin-Manuel Miranda and Hamilton. So that's, I mean, that's in New York City when Hamilton's meant something. Yeah. That was, I mean, it was a Hamilton and a cu- I did throw him a couple Marlboro Lights. And then on the way out, I gave him the box. So it actually ended up costing me like 40 okay. bucks. Well, listen, how about not calling your daughter? A, a pig start there <laughs> yeah. and then maybe avoid the involuntary manslaughter as well okay everybody <laughs> yeah. will like you after that all right no sleep the rizzo and jeff show one is older and wiser the other now the other's life fell to pieces and his fiance is out of glue yeah you get what you get here's to hoping we made the right decision weekdays 6 to 10 a.m the mom exemption okay now listen this is a warning Okay, it's 105.9 The Mountain, Nashville's Classic Rock. We talked about this before in a different capacity. It really seemed to chap some backsides. Now, I have some audio that's circulating because a mom thinks that, and and maybe rightfully so. Go ahead, what? Listen. I've been trying to preach this uh, to folks out there, uh, and we, we talked about this a couple of months ago. So if if you didn't hear this, uh, you're hearing it for the first time. And when you hear what this woman has to say, I don't believe that it's just a mom exemption. I believe it is a choice. It is a right. Okay. okay for you to decide what to do with this. Okay. okay. It, the last time we talked about this, uh, we were new. Uh, a lot more people are listening to this show now. So uh, that being said, uh, this is called the mom exemption. It's making its way online. Let me know what you think. And then we're going to tie it back to Jeff, who seems to think this is his inalienable right. I'm not returning my shopping cart, and you can judge me all you want. I'm not getting my groceries into my car, getting my children into the car, and then leaving them in the car to go return the cart. So if you're going to give me a dirty look, off. Okay. All right, Mama. So Mama is saying, I am a mother. She's right. I'm grocery shopping. I got to put the kids in the car. She's right. I am leaving my car where it stands Darn y'all, I don't care about what you got, and it is what it is. And people actually are agreeing with her. They should. Okay, now here's the thing. 
I told you, and I, I stand firm in the fact that I fundamentally disagree and think it is selfish for you not to, to bring your cart back as a, a single person shopping. You're one person. You go shopping, you bring your cart back. You say it's other people's jobs. You gave me some crap about it being a, what was it, a, 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 a something for the economy? Listen, I just read a story that there was a 90-year-old cart pusher, Okay. All right. That was that was kind of his job, what he was doing. Everybody was, you know, saying to him, you know, what a great job you're doing. Right. There you go. A man at 90 years old who felt like he could still work was was pushing cars. Good for him. And I'll tell you what, she's right. The safety concerns. It could take a second for somebody to steal your car with your kids in it. You turn around for a second to put that cart back and boom, there goes your car. Your kids are in a high speed chase down the Blue Ridge Parkway. Oh, yeah, nobody has oh. nobody has time for anything like that. Okay, especially if you're a mom, you're busy. Kids are screaming. You're in the market. You have more than one. Maybe it's raining. Things of that nature. I've said this a hundred times, and this proves my point. She's right, and I know that there's people out there like her that are with me. It is not your job to ha- now. Is it courteous? Sure, but it's not your job to have to put your cart back in the cart corral. I'm tired of it. Okay, so then the question is, is the mom exemption a legitimate excuse? Okay, a lot of you are parents and grandparents. Okay, Jeff, I I, I think the, the, the world has spoken about that. I mean, listen, we have tickets to Killer Queen, 828-240-1059. Love to uh, hear from you. Give us a t- uh, call or uh, shoot us a text on the Mountain Talk and Text line. I just believe that there is no circumstance except for, I'll, I'll give her this. If you have three or more kids, oh, you should be exempt from having to take the cart back. I agree with her on that. I do not agree that you make a video and then basically tell people to 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 just go pound sand if they don't like it. Well, I'm I, glad that she spoke up because we are pressured to do all these kind of things in this world, and we don't have to do that. This is a new layer to this that maybe I wish that I had months ago back in this argument yes, when we were doing it, yeah. and it makes more sense now yeah, when you hear it. But I'm you're not, not a my mom. Kid, I'm not leaving my kids in the car. Well, you know, look. At the end of the day, whether I am a mom, a mom or not, like I told you, this gives people work and things to do. All right. So, okay. There's a, I go to a lot of supermarkets where I see a lot of people just farting around in there. OK. And somebody could go out and, and help out there. Is there any circumstance in which it is OK to not bring the cart back? This new trend is it's called the mom exemption. And here is the audio one more time. I'm not returning my shopping cart and you can judge me all you want. I'm not getting my groceries into my car, getting my children into the car and then leaving them in the car to go return the cart. So if you're going to give me a dirty look, off. 828-240-1059. Uh, let's do this. Let's get a couple people here. Uh, the Mountain, good morning. Hello. Hey, what's going on, guys? What's up, man? Uh, hey, hey, this is Dave. I just thought I'd call you guys this morning. This this grocery cart thing, it, it comes down to just do what's right. Oh. You know, man. I had a custom car about 10 years ago okay i had a grocery cart roll clear across the parking lot and put a big ass dent in it do you agree with the mom exemption so the reason that we're talking about this again is because this woman says i'm a mom i got kids i'm you know i do I, i don't have time it's somebody else's job do you at least agree that if you're a mom with two three kids in the car you got groceries you're by yourself you shouldn't have to do it Definitely not. I don't agree with her at all. I'm with you. I'm with you, Dave. Uh, uh, Dave, I appreciate you, buddy. I mean, listen, it it is what it is. 105.9 The Mountain, good morning. Hello. Good morning. What's up? So, look, if you use the cart, you put it back. Because they could take one way, you have no carts, and then you don't have anything to carry the stuff in. If that cart hits your car, you want to sue them, 
and it's because some idiot left it out there, and, and there is no exemption. If you can go into the store and you can come out of the store, you can put the damn cart back. You're right, because again, now, now, did you hear the woman like say that this is the mom exemption? I'm a mom. I have kids. I'm carrying this. No I'm way, carrying that. No way. You get the kid to run the cart back, or you leave the cart, and the kids carry the groceries. One or the other. All you right. Leave all it right. out there in the middle of the lot. Uh, the story would be in the corral see, that they put in the parking lot for those things, so you don't have to bring it all the way back in. Yeah, you'd be feeling a little different, I tell you. If she turns around to put the cart and somebody takes the car and takes off with her kids, then it's a different story there, all right? Yeah, what's that? Well, one yeah. in six so, uh, trillion? That car, it's your car, and you don't have, uh, you, can't, you can't get it fixed because, oh, you're in the parking lot, and that's just too bad. Your insurance company says, yeah, well, we'll triple your rates for three years. Yep. We'll okay. triple your wow. rates for three years because of the one in seven billion chance okay, someone takes your car on a high-speed chase. I've, Hang on there, my friend. I, I appreciate it. I've, everyone. Had my, I've been to the market. You know I go to the market all the time. I'm an old lady that likes the market. Yep. I, my car has never been hit once by a cart. Okay. All right, I'm You know what? Because it. you're the guy who leaves the cart and everyone else's cars get hit. All right, everyone on the phone, don't go anywhere. Hang on because you are qualified uh, for uh, those uh, Killer Queen tickets. We have a lot of people calling in 828-240-1059. Is a mom, this woman, exempt from bringing the cart back because she has her kids with her? Yes or no? Asheville, don't feel pressured. Leave your cart sitting there today. Don't okay. Do it to me, right, don't, don't, don't do it. Don't do it. Hey, we got great news. The Rizzo and Jeff Show knows that you pay and you pay and you pay. Netflix, Amazon, you name it. And there's a subscription fee for it. So they wanted to remind you that the Rizzo and Jeff Show is and always will be free. Anywhere and everywhere. Just like 1059 the Mountain. Tell your friends. The cart exemption, that's what we're talking about. It's 105.9 The Mountain, Nashville's Classic Rock. To uh, leave your cart or not leave your cart, what do you think? Uh, good morning. Good morning. So what do you think about this, huh? I think the mom should be allowed to leave the cart by the car. Okay. More important. Okay, so why is that? Because the kids are more important than a, a buggy sitting in the middle of a parking lot. Exactly. And anything could happen. You turn your back. You understand that. If you're a parent, you know, you turn your back for a second and something could go wrong. So, the, Absolutely. Yeah, the cart should be. I get it. I, get, I think we're putting too much emphasis on this, you know, being polite thing and all this kind of Look, there's people that work there. It's part of the gig. When you work at a supermarket, sometimes you work the front end, sometimes you you do stock, and sometimes you get the carts. It just goes with it. Right. And, you know, if people were nicer out there, they would take the cart from the lady with the kids and put it back in the buggy rack for them. Yeah, I, I get it. But at the same time, to make a video and just be so trite about it, like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, 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 and, and again, she got in, she got out of the car, went shopping, bagged the stuff and brought it to the, to the car with the kids. So you why, know what? Because you know what I mean? Why, the, why is she not supposed to take it back? Well, Rizzo, at the end of the trip, trust me, at the end of the shopping trip, it all sounds like a good idea to you're shopping with three kids for an hour. All right. I, 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 uh, I, I guess. So uh, you, you think this woman absolutely uh, is okay leaving the cart there? Absolutely. All right. Do me a favor. Hang on for just one second. 828-240-1059. What do you think? We appreciate uh, all the calls and texts coming in. We'll get more of them coming up after Motley Crew on 105.9 The Mountain. We get it. We're new. So it's time for you to sound off on the Rizzo and Jeff show. Let us have it. What do you want to say to us? What do we need to know? Call now. 240-1059. Coming up on 105.9 The Mountain. It is 105.9 The Mountain, Asheville's Classic Rock. Jeff, we were talking about the mom exemption because this woman has gone viral for, uh, you know, basically making a video saying, I'm not putting my car back. I don't care what you say. Yeah, look, uh, you got three kids, uh, you know, you're running around, it's crazy, and uh, you don't put the cart back. Should you be vilified for it? I don't think you should in general, but uh, this woman's going viral over that. And we have Lee on the phone. Lee, good morning. How are you? Good morning. Great. So what do you think about this, Lee? We've had some for, we had some against. Where do you stand? Well, I have three kids, um, and, and they're they're teenagers now. But um, I, I think I feel like it's just kind of inconsiderate. I mean, you have to get your kids in the car in the cart um, to some way, so they've either walked to the cart or uh, she's left them in the car and gone to get a cart. Um, and so you can do that 
when you're returning them to when you're returning the card. Um, also, when I was if if I had to take the kids, which I tried not to, um, then I would park next to or near a uh, sharp return corral. Okay, so you would park next to like a corral on purpose. Okay, well, those spots might not be open. What if it's uh you know a busy you know you're you know at Ingles and it's busy on a Saturday and you got to park way in the back. Things happen. You're right. Things do happen. However, they had to get in the cart somehow. So I, I either left them in the car to go get a cart or they walked to the cart. So then at that point, they can walk with you. They can, you can return the cart with the kids. The kids can all walk back to the car with the parent. I mean, I think there are ways around it. I think, I think, I think she was just being a little trite and a little bit much. I see that. Um, to, yep. to not look for other options. It, and you know what? It gives it, it gives people that are quote-unquote considered millennials, you know, people 45 and under a bad look. But you know what? I agree with you, you know, and you're a mom of three kids, so you would know. So your opinion holds the most weight thus far this morning. So thank you for your call, uh, Lee. Thank you. All right. All right. Let's, uh, let's get to uh, 1059 The Mountain. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. How are you guys? Oh, Grandma Emma, I was waiting for you. What do you got, Grandma Emma? <laughs> There's a lot of moving parts to this. First of all, you can't leave your cart right next to your car. There's too many places to push it, you know, to get it out of the way where somebody else won't run into it or it won't run into somebody else. I've seen a lot of runaway carts. Okay. So, okay. So, anyway. So you agree with this woman or disagree with this woman? Well, yeah, I, I have to play Switzerland on this, you know. I mean, Ooh. really, I uh, I think there was uh, places she could have put her cart without leaving it to where somebody could hit it and still keep an eye on your kids. I mean, I have 16 grandkids. I mean, really, come on. I, and see, I've taken six of them to the store with me. I Look, was, I was I thinking of her. You're, you're a superwoman. Not everybody is superwoman. You can't compare them to Grandma Emma. You yeah. get it? Yeah, no, there's no comparison. And I want you guys to know I got chastised by my daughter for my comments about the author yesterday morning. <laughs> well, so, you tell your, you know yeah. what, you tell your daughter to take a seat. You're, you're the, you're, you're the queen bee, and that what you say goes. You hear me? I did. <laughs> All, right. All right, Grandma Emma, thank you so much for checking in this morning. Okay. Thanks. Bye bye. All right, bye take bye. it easy. It is one hundred five nine. The Mount Nationals class rock. Jeff, I don't. I mean, look, I the women. It was two men that said no, two women that said yes, and Grandma Emma that Switzerland. Yeah, she can tend to be once in a while when it comes to B. Arthur, she'll speak up. <laughs> right. But other than that, yeah, she's swazzy. Yeah, right? yeah. What do you think? More of the Rizzo and Jeff show coming up next after Thin Lizzy. All right, I think it's time to wrap up this conversation. It's unbelievable here on 1059 the Mount Nationals Classic Rock. Hey, what you guys remember? I mean, you know, Grandma I'm not talking about getting chastised for B. Arthur, but it's funny how men and women see things differently. You had two men call us about this mom. Uh, I guess if you, I call it the mom, uh, you know, exemption. And if you're just tuning in and you're saying, what is the mom exemption? This is what the mom exemption was. I'm not returning my shopping cart and you can judge me all you want. I'm not getting my groceries into my car, getting my children into the car and then leaving them in the car to go return the cart. So if you're going to give me a dirty look, f- off. So that seemed to rub people, you know, one way or the other. I mean, it is what it is. I and, like it. you know, you know I yeah, don't know I how like you it. feel about it. I think it's rude. Um, My kind of lady right there. I like it. You know, you had a, yeah. I think the one that held the most weight with me was Lee. Lee is a mother, is a mother of three children. They're teenagers now, right? Yeah. But, you know, she could do it. Emma. Grandma Emma, six kids at a store. She could do it, mm, okay. right? Yeah. You, you just want an excuse. You want someone to validate your laziness. Mm. Yeah, okay. So, uh, yeah, listen, uh, you get the final uh, word on this. Uh, go ahead, 105.9 The Mountain. Hello. Morning, fellas. Oh, I, I'm glad it's I you. Yeah, I don't know that I was calling in to give you the final word well, on that. Well, you have to. You have to now. How do we? rude. What's well, on this rude part here, I'll tell you, rude, rude was cutting me off yesterday. I was trying to tell you something about my friend Jose, and you just slapped and cut me off. But I don't, you know what, I don't give a rat's butt about a shopping cart. Just carry your freaking groceries. It's a whole lot easier. But 
But my friend Jose, I got some terrible news. He got shot. Oh, boy. What happened, what happened to Jose? What, happened to Jose? Oh, what kind well, of me, mess me is he Jose in? And my neighbor, me, me and Jose and my neighbor, we was out at the bar listening to some music. And uh, Jose just kept talking and talking. And uh, he told my neighbor that I'm the one that put that dead rabbit in his cage. <laughs> well, next thing you know, Jose got shot in a kneecap. Oh no! Uh, it was it his was it his big mouth was, his talking was that, it that his flippity oh, yeah. flapping? I was say, you know what you know what the moral of that story is? What is that? Let's talk <laughs> more music. Okay, all right. All right. I'll tell you what. Well, you know what? Well, you know what? We're gonna do it for Jose. We're, We're gonna keep talking today. All right. All right. We're here for you, We're, Jose. We're here for Even you. Even though you're missing a kneecap, we got gotcha. you. <laughs> we <laughs> got you. Come on, Weaverville. It's time to rock out with the Rizzo and Jeff Show. Nobody? Candler? Black Mountain? Anka? Woodfin? Bueller? Anyone? Well, they're new, so here's to rocking out on one of... Would you believe me if I told you that uh, five years ago a medium fry was $1.59 at McDonald's and today it's three seventy nine? It's one oh five nine the Mount Nashville's classic rock. I am stunned and maybe it's maybe maybe I am I don't know, in my own world. I, I I didn't realize how much this has changed. But Jeff brought up a good question. I mean, it's true. Like has has anyone been to yeah. like, you know, go get fast food for the family recently and been like, what in the heck am I am I getting a Mercedes with this? Like, right. what's it's happening? Ridiculous. Listen, and is look, it is it dipped in gold? Listen, uh, here's the reality. When you look at it, and, and even this, Rizzo, even a, uh, a ten piece order of chicken McNuggets went from five ninety nine to ten ninety nine. Listen to me, at ten ninety nine. I want Jim Perdue I, delivering a, those chicken right, nuggets Jim. to me at, right there in front of me. I want Jim Perdue putting <laughs> right. his fingers in my right, mouth. Right. You're feeding me, Perdue. All right. All right for ten ninety nine for a 10-piece? Uh, just a couple of fast food. So McDonald's has gone up 100% in prices. This is going to backfire bad. Oh, it is going to backfire bad because you know what? Like I said, the what made, at least for me, and may, maybe it's not the same for you, uh, 828-240-1059, shoot us a text, give us a call uh, on the Mountain Talk, a text line. Uh, but, you know, McDonald's to me was always that like, yo, let me go spend five bucks and grab sure. like a meal, right? That, wasn't that the you, gig? You can't, you can't spend five bucks. You know what no. I mean? But Popeye's comes in at number two at 90%. And I like Popeye's chicken. I love Popeye's. Uh, you know, it's I think it's the best of the bunch, but uh, at that at that price, it's a it's a rough go. It, you know, the, and we get it. We understand there's a lot of good local restaurants, but yes. some, sometimes you're on the go. Well, and this is the thing. We are not saying that we don't advocate and are not advocating for all the great local restaurants. That's where we spend most of our money. However, we're just specifically talking about how much these prices have increased. Uh, uh, Baby Hands loves Taco Bell. Up 81%. And it was funny because she wanted Taco Bell the other day and she got like the Chalupa box. She got sure. like a uh, side taco and uh, a drink. And it was twenty one seventy nine. I said, I, just, I said twenty one. I said, what did you order? We got into a fight. I said, what are you ordering? I just told you. I said I went and had lunch over here uh, at Cape Pasa, the right over there in the shopping center. And my lunch was cheaper than what it would have been if I got a Mexican pizza meal at Taco Bell. And it was authentic, cooked right there on the spot, delicious. And that's why you go to the... I mean, uh, 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 there was a salesperson that told me about this restaurant. uh, And the uh, uh, and I'm going to butcher... It's Napoli's or Napoli's or whatever it is. They have a burrito the size of your head. Right. I mean, that's worth it. That's like 12 bucks. Uh, Coming in at number four is Chipotle, up 75%. Never was a Chipotle guy, but I will tell you, like you said, you could go and get authentic, great Mexican food in town here, Papa's and Beer, whatever it Mm -hmm. may be, and not pay. It's just amazing. Jimmy John's up 60-some percent, RB 60-some percent, Burger King 55%, Chick-fil-A 55%, Wendy's, and even Panera. So all of these places have either, you know, doubled 
or almost doubled their prices. Uh, I'll tell you what. I gave you an Arby's tip this morning, did I you, not? You know what? I, and I don't want to give it no, out I'm on the gonna, air. I'm giving it out. Don't give it out because on the air. You gave me the tip. Now you're giving the, the, the audience the tip? That's not a tip. That's look, not a friend tip. Listen, it came through the old Gmail, okay? Oh, so here's the deal. man. Starting Monday, five for five dollars roast beef sandwiches for one week only. And by next, the, next week. And by the way, if you buy one of them, they're like five eighty nine. I know. You get five a dollar so, a pop. So you get them for a buck a pop. Uh, you do. You get them for a buck a pop starting next week. A little uh, fast food. Is, tip. is is there anyone who just? I mean, maybe I just am oblivious. But like you know, if I somebody says they want something, you know, the bean, you know, uh, you know, baby hands, you know, I go, you know what, fine, whatever, mm-hmm. and then I pull up and I'm 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 befuddled. I'll never forget. I was at the Taco Bell on Tunnel Road. And I was like, what in the heck? I called her. I said, what did you buy? Mm. I said, what did you buy? Like, I, I mean, because I, I, I was like, you know, she, listen, she can eat and she is very small and skinny. She's one of those luggy people who is like right. so tiny. It's unbelievable. But she could eat like 18 plates of pizza. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, what did you buy? And it was like a box and a taco. Mm-hmm. So I guess the moral of the story is one, you know what? Uh, eat local, but uh, two, uh, you know what? The I I have been hoping for the dollar menu. I guess the dollar double stacks and the dollar McDoublays are a thing of the past. Is well, that, is I that... think I think what you need to do is you go home to your lady, you bring her a Merriam-Webster dictionary, okay. tell her to look in the R section, okay. okay, and when she looks at it, just look, say, spell it out for R A T I O N S rations. <laughs> That's how we're eating. Okay. More Rizzo and Jeff coming up after a quick break on Asheville's classic rock station, 105.9 The Mountain. I want you to imagine yourself partying on the beach. Think back to when you were a kid, right? Think back to when you went to the Outer Banks. Think back when you went to Myrtle Beach. Think back when you were just sitting there Charleston, drinking, hanging yeah. in Charleston, when you were hanging out with your friends. You're partying on the beach. You have your boom box and then... This is playing all night long. You're saying, what is this? This wasn't my childhood. Unless, of course, you were born in the uh, 1720s. What? But this is something that people in North Carolina and South Carolina, among many other states on the eastern seaboard, are considering in order to stop children. Quote, unquote. People under the age of 21 from partying and drinking and doing drugs on the beach. Blaring. Classical music all night long, Jeff. Now, I posted this story up on 1059themountain.com uh, right there on uh, the Rizzo and Jeff page, so you can check it out. Now, uh, now listen to me. Are we just talking kids here, or are we talking people in general? Because Well, when- it's it started out with kids, and then they're talking about how just listen, people get rowdy. Listen, when I'm drunk, and I'm on the beach, and I'm feeling it, I don't care what the heck you're playing. I, so I, this I, doesn't I'm, matter to you? This no. isn't bothering you at all? No, none whatsoever. I would, I'd be spinning, depending on how drunk I am now. Now, it depends on what I got involved okay, in Okay, beach drunk. Beach drunk, I, I lived in Florida for years, so yeah. I've been beach drunk plenty of times. I got to tell you, this comes on, I could be twirling. Uh, there could really? Be, there could be things happening. I could be dancing. I, it probably would not affect me too much, depending on my level of uh, toxicity. Really? Yes. See, to me, this is a buzzkill. And, and think about it. Would you party... If you knew this was going on on the beach, would, like seriously, it, w- would you? Would you go to the Outer Banks and party and crack open a beer? Go to Charleston? Would you go is this the, down to Myrtle Beach if this is what they were doing to you? What's this? What, this is torture. This is the only way to get people that are unruly off the beach. This is it. Well, this is the only way. If you remember, they were blaring uh, death metal at a bear. 
Okay, I, I, we did talk about that. That right? didn't work. So that didn't work. I so put, I wonder if this is going to work. Will it work? Would this work with you? 828 Shoot us a text. Uh, by the way, thank you to the gentleman or lady who sent in that really nice text uh, just a couple minutes ago. They've been listening since 645. I appreciate you. Um, but uh, is there anyone who, who like would be down with this or would this drive you nuts? Classical music drives me crazy. Well, I've, I've heard of them doing this outside of like convenience uh, like convenience stores right so when you go to like a, a store or wherever it may be and people are hanging around loitering and things that they'll play they'll play some music and things to get you to not stay you know I, I, like the H and B grocery store that's I, on State Street which you know everybody hangs at all the time and there's like shootings yeah, and stuff yeah yeah you mm-hmm. know uh, you know maybe you know they jam some of this out there a little beef the day. oven a little beef oven and boom, they're out of there. Maybe that's the way to go about it. So you think a beef oven boom is the way to to, to stop the Asheville crime spree? Well, we got to try something here. People are shooting in the houses, everything else. Maybe a little classical music changes the culture of the city. So what, then what we do is we just put speakers up everywhere. Up and down Tunnel Road. Up and down Tunnel Road. <laughs> right. And this is all you hear at the, at the Mountaineer Inn. All the stuff that's happening with that scary cowboy, right. you hear beef oven, and it, it defers... If anything, I'd commit more crimes. You, I don't no, go against myself. No, you wouldn't. You drive down Tunnel Road, okay, and and this and there's just speakers aplenty playing all this stuff. You're not playing around. You're not playing games, okay? You're out of there. You're, you're, right, I, you're right. I am out. Yeah. I am home. I am safe, and I am crime-free. Yes, so hopefully that happens... We'll do that on Tunnel Road, and everybody will put away their AR-15. So. <laughs> Come on, Weaverville. It's time to rock out with the Rizzo and Jeff Show. Nobody? Candler? Black Mountain? Anka? Woodfin? Bueller? Anyone? Well, they're new, so here's to rocking out. A little misbehaving, a little flavor flavin', and a little bit of a suitcase hidey doozy. Hmm. Coming up on the JN, is that true? Yeah, that's just the amount. If you wanted to put it all in a pretty little ball, that is would that, be it. Is you that the professional it. description? Uh, as good as it gets, yes, yes. <laughs> JNN brought to you by Train Eating and Cooling Systems. They are tested, retested, engineered, and re-engineered to keep up with you because we run together. Visit traininfo.com to find your local independent train dealer. That is traininfo.com because, as you know, it's hard to stop a train. <laughs> It's time for the JNN, the Jeff News Network, with all the news, important information, and local things that you want to know. It won't be here, but hey, they try, so here's the JNN on 105.9 The Mountain now. All right, so in the midst of the story that uh, Red Lobster is planning to close another 135 (sighs) restaurants, if the landlords uh, where they have a lot of these restaurants won't lower their rent. So that's what they're saying. Letting these landlords know, hey, listen, we're if you don't drop the rent on us, then guess what? Uh, we're getting on out of here. Okay? We're out of 5,000. Right. So, uh, you know, just another just another bad turn. It's getting rough for them. And uh, going viral today is Flavor Flav of all people. Flavor Flav. <laughs> Uh, who uh, rolled into Red Lobster, who recently filed for, of course, Chapter 11 bankruptcy, he took a... <laughs> not him, not him, not him. Uh, just the the Red Lobster. Uh, oh, I thought he no. was bankrupt. Uh, he okay. Probably, but uh, uh. He, uh, he took a picture. He went into a Red Lobster, and he bought everything on the menu. So everything that was on there, he did around... Like, this was going to save everybody. So he said, give me everything that's on the menu. One of those things, you know. And uh, so they gave him everything that was on the menu. Um, so, uh, I mean, he was in. I mean, listen, I know he's a, he's in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, which, listen, Public Enemy I love, but they're not rock and roll. He's got the Lifetime Achievement Award for Grammys. But does anyone take well, a guy with a clock seriously? I know. A snack? And, and here's how bad it is for for uh, for Red Lobster. <laughs> uh, hanging suppo- on this. Supposedly. All right. He's scheduled to have a convo with Red Lobster. <laughs> About <laughs> potentially collaborating, uh, in quotes, sooner than later. Well, it better be sooner. <laughs> so uh, there might be a potential so, partnership. So wait a minute. The savior of Red Lobster will be 
<laughs> so, flames. so, so, so yeah. I, you know, I often sometimes hit up local businesses like Two Trees or something. And I say, hey, you know, we'd love to do a collaboration with you. There's this sure. plant girl that we're gonna have on the show because right. she's, uh, you know, I'm a plant guy. Uh, coming up, but it's 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 like who says, you know, who's gonna save my business? Flavor Flav. Yeah. Like who who says that? Yeah. Like well, focus on paying the rent listen. and not flavor. Because flavor is not he's not doing it for free. He's gotta pay for the clocks. Listen, you filed for chapter eleven. You've decided to go with flavor flav. <laughs> Now, a, now, now, file, bad, now bad. file for 12, 13, <laughs> 14, 14, 15. 15. Keep it going. Yeah. It's the most trusted source for useless information. Who is your source? I need to know your source. The JNN Jeff News Network is on 105.9 The Mountain now. All right, so uh, there hasn't been anybody banned from life from Major League Baseball since Pete Rose uh, bet back in the day, okay? And Which it's, is a, it was the, so ridiculous. The all-time hits later. Uh, and, uh, you know, so uh, there's all kinds of talk, uh, you know, should he be in the Hall of Fame, should he not? That's up for yes. debate. It kind of is what it is. Some people go one way, some people uh, go another on it. Uh, but it has happened again. Uh, Major League Baseball has banned San Diego Padres infielder Tusapita Marcano, all right? I probably butchered it, but nevertheless. What uh, happened to Tusapita? From the game for life. So they did an investigation, and they discovered that he placed bets on baseball games involving his own team while he was on the injured list in 2023, okay? Uh, so he's 24 years old. He placed 387 baseball-related bets from 2022 to 2023, Totaling over a hundred fifty thousand dollars. Now, uh, two hundred thirty-one of those bets were placed on games, for, uh, Major League Baseball games, for a total of eighty-seven k. Twenty uh, twenty-five of those two hundred thirty-one bets involved the Pirates, the team at which he played on. Uh, now, mind you, he was horrific in winning these. Okay, so he's not very good. He won only. You ready for this? Yeah. Four point three percent of his bets. <laughs> So, so so wait right. a minute, hold on. So how many did he place? Three hundred eighty-seven. Uh, three three hundred eighty-seven okay, and, so, so and four point three percent. So so, four, so let's say four hundred bets. Okay, it's he so, wins four for every hundred that he places. So that means that he won sixteen made of max uh, of yeah. of four hundred bets. Right, right. He's right. in the hole. Oh, he's big time in the hole. <laughs> yeah. did, that, like he's in the hole. Yeah, he, you know the, he's saying that he 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 uh, he denies that he compromised or manipulated. Uh, the Pirates games he How bet on. How could he? He was on the injured reserve list. I know, I know. So, uh, but he put himself on there. And then, you know, I just saw a story about the guy from uh, the NBA who uh, probably about two months ago uh, was banned uh, from the NBA for life. And he was actually, as he was betting on games, he was trying to pay back betting debts to, you know, the wrong guys. So, oh. he, so during the game, the NBA game, he would say, oh, I'm not feeling well. Take himself out of the game to hit certain parlays and then come back, you know, get three rebounds but not score any points. He would brick things, things like that. So if these guys don't think that they're going to get nailed and caught doing this, it's unbelievable that, you know, this is all happening. I just have been a big fan of Tusa Pete's. Yeah, Tusa Pete, you're and, kind of your guy. <laughs> and I'm so sad to see that Tusa yeah. Pete's well, is well, no longer allowed to when, play. Listen, when, in the what's he in the NFL? No, too, it's Major League Baseball. Oh, okay. So I'm, he played, I feel listen, bad. He's played for the Padres and the Pirates, so he wasn't heading anywhere anyway. <laughs> so. From Asheville to well, that's pretty much all they can handle right now. It's time for the least trusted news network in town, but they are new. The Jeff News Network is on 105.9 The Mountain now. All right, and finally, a, a Spirit Airlines flight. Flyer uh, lost her luggage, okay? Or she thought it was lost. And she decided, you know what? I, I have uh, an Apple Watch that is that is in my luggage, and those things you can track. Mm. So she did track down her luggage. Mm. Uh, she tracked it down to a man who worked at one of the stores in the airport. Uh, by the time that she wound up getting to his house, you know, they called the cops. She was down there in the you know depths of Miami, the not good part. And everybody okay. thinks that everybody thinks of Miami South Beach. It's the, the rest of it is not like that. Oh no no. So uh, so she gets to his house, uh, calls the cops. Cops are like, you know, what are you doing here? This is dangerous for you to be in this neighborhood. Uh, and uh, you know, they the luggage had been gone. He threw it out. He got rid of it. 
Uh, but they, as they pulled up video from where he works, in the back they saw him going through her luggage of all the stuff. So they, they nailed him on stealing it. So, uh, but Well, he, he I mean, took it, yeah. this is uh, Paola uh, Garcia talking about how she tracked her luggage down. But the crazy part about this is that, you know, kind of has a little bit of flaccidity to the ending. 15 minutes from the airport. Because I said, how is Peter moving my suitcase there? The first thing I remember the police told me is like, what are you doing here? This is so dangerous for you to be here. I think it's a, a group working in the airport. One person no can do that. They just take baths. So basically, okay. she... Well, <laughs> well, whatever happened there, but, you know. <laughs> I, th- I, th- I think I, that was two of Pete's. Yeah. I think I, he was saying it's time to take a bet on spirit. I think I described her situation better. So, you know. Yeah, all right. All right. Well, here's the deal. Be careful with your luggage and maybe put a tracker on it. All right. There you go. Then uh, go to go to the the yeah. hardcore areas yeah. of Miami. All right. Yeah. And track okay, it down. track it down. down. Good luck. <laughs> yeah. Hey, it's the radio. Yeah, I'm talking to you. Yes, you. Wouldn't it suck if you had to pay for me? Well, I'll let you in on a little secret. All this great music and the laughs. Four tears. Depending on where you land. On the Rizzo and Jeff Show, we'll never charge you to listen. We pay for enough stuff. We just want you to laugh and keep rocking. The Rizzo and Jeff Show. You never give. Gets me again. Yeah, that well, that Def Leppard song gets you every time. Every you think it's ending friggin' time. Yeah, it gets me every time. Yeah. It's one hundred five nine. The Mount Nashville's classic rock. Uh, you got the Rizzo and Jeff show here, the semi professional radio show. Semi. <laughs> I don't even know if we could put a semi together right now. <laughs> And then speak of the devil on this one. Speak of the devil. Yeah. Uh, the uh, there's a tribe of people untouched by humans. They, they're a civilization. They live deep, 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 deep in the Amazon rainforest, okay? They don't have, like, you know, computers, toilets. They, they, they live like a civilization that lives in a jungle. And you know what? And here's the problem. They're probably happy. They're content in their lives. Oh. They like everything that's going on, okay? Oh, you're wrong. They were. They were. And now they are corrupted, And somebody thought it'd be a good idea to run a social experiment on the last completely isolated tribe in the world. Thank you, Elon Musk, by the way. Thank you. He said, what if I give them all phones, tablets, and the internet, hook them up with some high-speed Wi-Fi in the middle of the Amazon? Because he has that Starlink, which connects to satellites and things like that. Right, which, and I know he was, you know, I think, helping... Ukraine with stuff like that and things of that nature. Now, again, uh, you want to help a country at war, that's fine. You want right. to corrupt the society, that's different. Right, right. And you say, well, why is he corrupt the society? Well, here's the thing. Uh, they really found out quickly about internet porn. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'll get into the full deets uh, coming up after Jimi Hendrix, but suffice it to say that they are corrupted. Yeah. So much so. That it had to be pulled from them, but now they know what they're missing out on. Yeah. I look, I'm with them. Is, I understand. So, uh, 1059 The Mountain, Asheville's Classic Rock. Uh, this is quite a doozy of a story. Yeah, yeah. A, a reclusive tribe in the Amazon. Uh, this is Brazil's 2000 member Marubo tribe. Uh, and uh, look, they for years have had no connection and probably happy about it. Yeah. Uh, no connection to basically the outside world, the Internet, no telephones. You just if you're a part of the Marubo tribe, you go about your business. You Marubo. And you just do everything that goes along with it. When you, you know, you got to hunt to eat, all those kind of things that go along. You with, gather with, sticks, you build huts like you got stuff to do like people did like back in the olden days. And then here comes the Elon. Elon Musk and uh, a group. and and Jack Nikas. He's right. from the New York Times, right? And a bunch of people thought it would be a good idea to uh, not only uh, deliver telephones uh, mm. to to this tribe, but uh, hook them up with Starlink. And Starlink is Elon Musk's thing, and it works by connecting like antennas to low orbiting satellites, so that you could basically get Wi Fi. So, Anywhere in the world. Right. So they thought that this would be a, a wonderful idea for this tribe. And lo and behold, mm. it became a problem. Did it not, Rizzo? It did, Jeff. Now, they can't get Amazon packages out there. Uh, that's a shame. But uh, they were finding that, uh, well, 
they're uh, they were finding they were discovering um, mature websites. Yeah, uh, and they got hooked. Yeah, yeah. And 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 here's Jackie Nikas uh, yeah. of the New York Times explaining uh, what he saw when he visited the tribe. Right away, the internet was a huge hit, and people were on it all the time, so much that it became a problem for the hunting and the farming that are necessary for their way of life. And so what the Marubo leaders did is nowadays, in almost all of the villages, the internet is only on for several hours in the morning and several hours in the evening, and then all day Sunday. So basically, what happened was everyone stopped farming Mm -hmm. and everyone stopped tribing and everyone sat in their hut <laughs> and watched pornography. Right. And right. now they have to get up early to watch pornography so that they can continue with their day because the Marubo people, they're like, uh-uh. And then Sunday is your day. And of course, it's the Lord's day. So why Sunday? I don't know. Give them Saturday. But, like, you know, they have one day a week where they can just, and they did not get out of the house hut and or off the computer for nine months. Well, what they said. The civilization fell apart. Well, what he also said is that uh, many of the young Marubo men have been sharing adult videos in group chats, and he has already (laughs) observed more aggressive sexual behavior in some of them. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, and here's the thing. So now they see, you know, what you see when you go on to an adult website. And so there's, uh, you know, because they were not. It's sort of like the Adam and Eve effect. Like, you know, they didn't know that they didn't wear clothes. Right. They didn't know. But but now they're like, you know, oh, there's a thing about size. There's a thing about this. There's a thing about that. You know, the women are are, are also looking at these things. So it, it has corrupted their pure way of life. This uh, was the last purity ring on earth. Look, and uh, Elon went in and took a big stinker on it. Listen to me. Uh, they are learning what we have known for a, a long time, okay? The light bulb, the wheel, the steam engine. That's it. You think they're the greatest invention of all time? It's internet porn, and yeah. we all know it. That's okay. right. We all stand right. by right, it. Right, yeah. right. The Rizzo and Jeff Show. <laughs> One loves Frazier, and the other's still into wrestling. Who's who? Eh? Find out more interesting tidbits about them every morning right here. Well, if somebody dies, this is one way to go. I guess instead of a funeral, you can have a funeral. Hmm. Yeah, well, listen, uh, that and much more on what didn't make the show. Rizzo and Jeff tried to do their work today, but just couldn't quite get it done. So here's where they try to cram it all in at the end. It's what didn't make the show on 105.9 The Mountain. Scares me because this guy, uh, almost my age and actually younger than you, uh, Brandon, 39 years old, died from complications from a stroke. And from those of you, for those of you who don't know, I am a diabetic. I have had a stroke in the past. And so this is what scares me. He passed. He leaves behind a wife and children, which is really sad. Terrible. Um, That being said, she said that she just couldn't envision planning a funeral for this guy. He was so young. He was so lively. So what he did, or excuse me, what she did for him is plan a funeral with, and this is where I think it's like, "Mm, is this appropriate? You got sad kids. They just lost their dad. Bouncy houses. Okay, uh, party bags, uh, pinatas, and uh, you know, instead of speeches, uh, they just kind of hung out and uh, had like goodie bags and a jam sesh. Quote. A jam sesh. Quote. A jam, sesh. jam sesh. So my my question is, how would you feel if you died tomorrow? And you know, people just had. I don't. I just. I get it. I just feel like that's like. Eh. Well, listen, you know what I mean. Look, I'm not going to tell people how to, uh, you know, celebrate the or not the right. uh, the loss of their loved one. See, I'm a believer in this. Uh, look, here's the deal: you close that casket. Uh, if you couldn't see me while I was alive, yeah, you ain't getting a look at me while I'm laying there. Okay, the, it, all dolled up. That's so weird that right? you, my grandmother was adamant. Oh, I mean it about the. She said, "I'm telling right. you." If that casket is open, and, and uh, it was, she'll haunt you. I, I, yeah. And it was crazy because I was sad because again, 
I, I spent a lot of time. You, yeah. You've been over my grandma's house. Like right. she, I love her, and I still do love her so much, and, and I miss her every day. But, like, it really upset me that I wasn't able to see her. So, I don't know. I, I mean, would it have been better than sobbing at a funeral? I don't know. I just thought it was a little, eh, I don't know. Yeah, you need a little sob. I yeah, want, I want you a, need to cry. I want a little, I want a sob job yeah. with me a little bit, you know. But at the sob end of the jobs day, are good. That's it. If you like, I always said, I told you before. Cry if you out. if you don't got the time while I'm I'm here and kicking or barely kicking or what I'm I'm not kicking much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but you need here, QC kinetics. You, you can't say hello. You can't come see me. Then guess what? Then you ain't getting a peek <laughs> at me when they got the makeup on. Rizzo and Jeff tried to do their work today, but just couldn't quite get it done. So here's where they try to cram it all in at the end. It's what didn't make the show on 105.9 The Mountain. If you're a funeral home worker, uh, do not use a body bag to smuggle a real-life uh, love doll uh, out of a home uh, in order to steal it to then use it for yourself. That is a big no-no. Why? Why is this like a blow-up doll? Uh, it is more of the. Re- it's called a real doll. Uh, they oh. are uh, several thousand dollars, and it's uh, it's pretty real, with the exception of it having a soul and talking. It's uh, as real as it why gets. Why do you need to smuggle it? Why? You well, know, you what couldn't... he did was he pretended while the person was away that the, he was being called to a death because he knew somebody had a real doll. So he went with a gurney put the real doll in the stretcher, zipped it up like it was a dead body, then stole and took it home. You know, look, you got to understand something, Rizzo. Some of these dolls these days can do wonderful, magical things. Oh, no, they do. That you wouldn't imagine. What they could create for you. I mean, look at a, what AI can do. Imagine that the dolls that people could make and that make them real life. The days of the old school, uh, you know, blow up doll are over. There's real deal stuff out there. Real deal so, stuff. you know, sometimes... Desperate times call for desperate measures. measures. <laughs> it just is what it is. All right. Rizzo and Jeff tried to do their work today, but just couldn't quite get it done. So here's where they try to cram it all in at the end. It's what didn't make the show on 105.9 The Mountain. And uh, crossing guards, an oft overlooked profession. Uh, we don't share enough love with and for our crossing guards. And uh, you know what? I think it upsets them, Jeff. Do, do they you pay ever... crossing guards? Isn't that a volunteer job? I, I don't think, think they, they pay, pay no, crossing I think, guards. No, no, I think you're paid. I mean, I think it's one of those things. It's like, you know, 12 bucks an hour. It's more of a help out thing. But crossing guards are under appreciate i mean tell me something name one crossing guard that you remember from your life trudy bragg are you serious yeah trudy she's still doing it by the way really in jersey trudy still rocking and rolling i used to work christy christy paglia yeah trudy bragg i worked with her she was actually uh she was a front end manager at kmart when i worked at kmart way back in the day when i was like 16 Really? Trudy. Okay, well, uh, this, uh, I guess, uh, school crossing guard was uh, accused of being frustrated with uh, their lack of appreciation and love, and they hit a parent with a stop sign. Here's a little bit of audio from the altercation. Chris Chobbs walks out of court and lunges at a news photographer while a woman tries to hold him back. Then he kicks at the photographer. He actually hits another one. Before leaving, Chavs picks up a stick and throws it at them. Only moments before, Chavs had gone before the judge and pleaded not guilty. The now fired crossing guard accused of beating a mother with the stick of his stop sign while her child was in the car. So he he's says. beating people. He just beats everybody, man. Stop beating innocent people. Listen, here's the problem. He's not respected. When he tells that's, you to stop. It's, it, that's what stop. it is, isn't it? Is that what it is, truthfully? Like, he tells you to stop. There's kids around. He takes his job seriously. He doesn't want a kid injured. All right? We need a little more of that in this world. But why is he beating everyone on the way into court? Doesn't well, that completely defeat the purpose of your case, bro? Well, listen. You know, he's got to stay true to form. <laughs> 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 the Rizzo and Jeff show has been here for a while. There's something not right about these guys. And finally have made some progress and are really enjoying the 828. Okay, they made a sale then.